What's up guys? It's Lampini again, and today I have a very interesting video. Uh, probably, this is a video I never thought I'd ever make, and uh, you'll find out when I show you what it is. But this is uh, part three in my little uh, series that I've kind of been going through right now, where I look at old video game consoles and I kind of give you a bit of history, play it a little bit. Um, it was supposed to just be with the Virtual Boy, but then I got an Atari, and, spoiler, now there's two more consoles on the way. Well, one of them is this one, and then there's another console that's on the way. But I've kind of made this into a hobby. I never realized how cheap some of this stuff was. The whole reason why this is such a special video is because I got this so cheap that, like, it's absurd. And if it still works, then I got incredibly lucky. But anyway, it came in this massive box. Yes, this is a... A big box right here. We're gonna just flip this up. We can do a little like classic unboxing experience. All right. Yeah. See, look how big this box is, man. In fact, I think I'm gonna open it up from another side. How do the unboxers do it? The unboxers are like over here, I think. Actually, hold on. I don't have a shirt on. Let me put this on. Yeah. Spoiler. Well, I'm not on camera. Well, I just got off work, so I feel like that's a good excuse. All right. So, I'm on this side now. Let us open this up and see what we find. Uh, I didn't bring scissors. I instead just brought my, my keys. Hopefully that'll work, though. Wow. All right. Well, that didn't, that didn't really go all that well. Maybe if I attack it from this side. There we go. Okay, now, now we're getting somewhere. Nope, are we? See, I don't want to just stab at it like a fucking Neanderthal. I feel like I'm better than that. We're going to try and do this a proper way. Man, the people at eBay are really good at packing their stuff up. But, I mean, I think this deserves it because this is a very, very uh, important item. Or a very historically important item. You already know what it is because you've read the title. However, you might not know what that exactly is. You've read that it's Magnavox Odyssey. But you may not have seen one before. You might not know how important it is to history. So, all right. Ooh, look at all this bubble wrap. You know, you never outgrow bubble wrap when you... Oh, God. There we go. I remember we got something uh, not too long ago, and my dad, who's, you know, in his 60s, was playing with the bubble wrap. So this will this will be nice when I'm like... If I get high later or something. All right. So, oh, my gosh, I can't... Wow, I never thought that I would get these. Okay, I think what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to move to the bed... So, um, you get a better look at the system as a whole. This was just kind of like the whole unboxing experience. So, jump cut. All right, so here we are. Uh, we may have to move this around a little bit, uh, judging by how big some of this gets. All right, um, let's take this out first, because I don't actually know what's in this. Uh, I'm excited, I actually. Again, I don't know what this is either. But I know, I can tell what some of the other stuff... Oh, okay, I know what this is. This is the uh, video cable for it. Um, it's a modified cable because of how old it is. So, this is an AC adapter. I think this is just like a generic one. Yeah, this looks like it's just a generic AC adapter. Probably from something else, honestly. There was the little plug... It's, uh, come on, focus. Come on, do this for me, man. Come on. You know, Stuart Ashens used to, he usually hold, there we go. Yeah, see, it works. Hold your hand in front of it and it focuses. So it's like a little headphone jack kind of thing. It's kind of similar to what the Atari had, honestly. Um, and then this is the cable. Um, it's been modified, actually. It's not usually, it usually doesn't have this end. Um, if what I think is true, this part here goes into a box because what old systems used to do 
was there was like a little TV switch box that you would have to screw into your TV and then you would have to switch it from channel three to channel four. Um, but we don't really have to worry about that anymore. So I think this part goes into the console and then this part will go into composite. Kind of like um, what we were doing with the Atari, except it's a different modification. So that's kind of cool that this guy modified this cable. Um, it actually, we honestly might be able to play it. Now that I think about it, we might be able to get it to work on the TV. So what's next in here? Um, it looks like the only thing that's left are controllers and the console itself. So let's take a controller out. So, oops. Actually, I think I'm just going to make a point of saying what this is. The Magnavox Odyssey is, uh, I just realized I never really introduced it to you. The Magnavox Odyssey. It was the first video game console ever to come out. It came out in 1972. It was made by Ralph Bayer um, and Magnavox kind of bought it and they, they were like almost the distributor and the seller. Ralph Bayer was the one who actually like, was actually the one who like invented it per se. So, um, it didn't necessarily have to do with that. So, this is one of the controllers for it. Yeah, I mean, you can see that this is just kind of, that's kind of nice though. Nice little wood. These are some bulky wires. Um... So basically what the Magnavox Odyssey played was, well, there were a bunch of different games. There was table tennis, hockey. It was kind of like a board game almost um, with the way some of the games worked, but it played table tennis, which is what eventually inspired Pong. So this has been around longer than Pong. So... This style moves your little person vertically, moves it horizontally on this side. This puts curve on the ball. So I'll, you'll, be able, you'll be able to see that um, when it gets on TV, on the TV. And this is a reset button. Wow, so wow, this is basically the first ever home console controller. And you don't even really hold it. It's kind of hard to hold it. You basically have to, um, you basically put on, on a table or something and then move it about, and then, wow, look at that port. Whew. You know something important's going on if you have to plug something like that in. Look at that. So, but that's 1972 for you. Keep in mind, 1972. Um, well, we, we did go to the moon, uh, but I'm trying to think, what, what wasn't around? That was 1972. That was, that was more than 10 years before Mario, just about. So gives you an idea. Now, this came with four controllers, which I don't really know why, because to my knowledge, you can only plug in two controllers. So um, we're just going to take those other ones out and then just go on the... Uh, go. Off. Wow. God, the console's bigger than I thought. Okay, so those are the controllers, and now we're going to take... Wow, Magnavox Odyssey, I cannot believe this. So one of the reasons why I'm so surprised that I got this was because they go for crazy expensive because not even a million of these were sold. They did not sell a lot of these at all because it was the first ever video game system. It was relatively expensive and there was something going around that people thought you could only play them on Magnavox TVs because it's called the Magnavox Odyssey. Um, but... You could um, you could play it on any TV, uh, so that was just kind of a, a bad marketing, I guess, and it didn't end up doing all that well. Um, this was kind of a concept. That's why the Atari Twenty Six Hundred is considered the first like successful video game system. This was the first one. It hadn't really caught on just yet. So let's remove this bubble wrap and get a better look at it. Uh, first impressions, though, is it's pretty big. Bigger than I thought it was. It was uh, bigger than I thought it was. Um, for some reason, I thought it was here. Um, actually, I'm gonna unwrap this, and then you'll see what it looks like compared to my laptop, compared to my Dreamcast. Um, I can show it to the Virtual Boy. I can show a lot of stuff, but man, I cannot believe this. The reason why I'm so surprised that I got it was because these things sell for crazy expensive. They're very rare. Like, you could find one for maybe $500 if you're lucky. I've seen them over $1,000, but I got this one for only, like, 200 bucks, which is a steal for something like this. Keep in mind, less than a million of these have been made. I think, I think it only sold, like, 200 or 300,000 systems, like, in total. So, 
this is a very rare system and it's very significant. You know, without this, we wouldn't have video games as we know it, basically. Um, it looks like I can just rip this open and then, yeah, wow, holy cow, look at this. Sorry, I'm a bit in awe here. I never really thought that I would get one of these. So, this is the Odyssey. Um, it's a little scuffed up, but yeah, here it is. It is, yeah, man, it's, it's a little bit bigger than I thought um, it was going to be, but uh, other than that, like, it, it looks like a system, you know, I, I, I would say, you know, it looks plain, but honestly, like, if I saw this in 1972, I'd be like, holy shit, look at this, because I feel like this even kind of holds up today like if the new if an if the new um if the new playstation or xbox kind of looked like this i'd be like wow that, lo that looks about right because like it's kind of light but like the material material it's made of is very like it's very well made so like this was definitely like it like a big piece of kit you know this was like a big thing um something weird though about this that some of you might be a little surprised to see is uh, here. that old video game systems, like uh, the first generation, actually took batteries. So you can put, um, I think these are C batteries, you can put C batteries in this and you don't need an AC adapter to play it, which I think is kind of strange that uh, that went out of fashion very quickly, but they used to take batteries. so. Very interesting. So now on this side, um, I wonder what this is going to say. Um, is it going to say like manufacture date? Because this looks really new. Or this looks like, like the official like sticker. Um, it doesn't really say anything like that though. So I don't think we're really going to get anywhere with that. So I think that's, that's about it. The ports are around back here. This is, uh, Player one, player two. This um, was for a light gun. That's where the video cable goes in. And I didn't know this until recently, but there's a little AC adapter port right there. So I would imagine that that's where um, this thing would go. Right. Yeah. So it does take AC power, which is good. Um, I was afraid that it wouldn't do that because I don't have any C batteries in my... Uh, in my apartment so that shouldn't be it actually it should um it was supposed to come with a game so um this thing here is a little like cart not even a cartridge there are more like cards um and it came with 10 cards and uh each card had like a different game like or had different sets of games because the Odyssey was so um, basic. When you have an Atari 2600, right, there were different cartridges, and different cartridges played different games. But the way the Odyssey worked is you would put a card in, and then instead of having two dots on a screen, there would only be one. Or there would be... Um... Oh, pause. Okay, guys, sorry for, that. sorry for that jump cut, but I was just looking all over the place. I actually unwrapped all the... the um controllers and I got some bad news I don't think we're gonna be able to play this um it's supposed to have it's supposed to, I thought it was supposed to come with a, a game card because like I said they came with cartridges um and it made the it programmed the games a little slightly different like I was saying there was one card you'd put in and there'd be a single dot or there'd be um uh, there would be two dots, but there'd be different rules. The, the, the dots would um, operate the game differently, stuff like that. The only problem is, though, without, without a card, without a card, it doesn't work. That turns it on. The card is what creates the circuit that turns it on. And without that card, I don't think we're going to be able to play anything. Maybe it's in some... It, like... It's like, this is the game cable. Why would they give me a game cable and an AC adapter and not a card? Like, a car the card is what, is, is what allows it to play. At least I'm pretty sure. 
I looked around everywhere and I couldn't, it, it, I, God, I hope he didn't, uh, I had to double check the eBay listing because he may not have gotten one. Like, I'm just kind of messing around with some of this bubble wrap because maybe it's in here somewhere. There is a lot of bubble wrap here. But it, it, do, God, it doesn't look like it, it doesn't look like it's here. Oh man, that's a bit of a bummer. I wanted to show you what the game looked like. Well, I can show you video of what it looked like. Um, or I could just get one of those cards on eBay and then make a follow-up video. If this gets enough views, I'll probably do a follow-up video. But you can find Magnavox Odyssey gameplay anywhere, really. Um, and I wasn't really pressed about playing it that much. I was more interested in uh, having it as a piece of furniture because when you think about it it is a huge piece of uh of history so you can see it's got this kind of like uh, i don't know how you would describe it it has like a raised up console part of it I, i'm sure there's a reason why it's like that and maybe like there's they, they couldn't fit it here but it's got wood here you know like there's wood here as well like that's nice polished wood you can see that that shine, like it look, it actually looks pretty cool. Among the light, holds up pretty well. Um, and again, I think I went over the ports. And then this is game speed, and this centers it. Hmm. I don't know what it would mean to center it, but yeah, you would put a card in here, and then it would work. I'm gonna plug it in. Maybe he modified it or modded it, modded it, modded it in some way so that it would turn on as soon as I plug something in, but um, I don't know. We're gonna, actually hold on, before we do that, I'm gonna get my uh, Dreamcast right here. And so this is, this is how big the Odyssey is compared to a Dreamcast. This is the Dreamcast, this is the Odyssey. So let's raise this up all the way so you get a nice sky view of it. So there, as you can see, like the Odyssey is is a lot bigger. You know, maybe it's maybe it's because I didn't expect the Dreamcast to be this small, but like the Odyssey is like twice the width of the uh, Dreamcast. Um, let me get the Atari. Let me get the twenty six hundred. And this is the Atari. Actually, the Atari is kind of a, a, a similar size to the Odyssey. If anything, it's kind of... Um... But see, here's the weird thing. This came out in 1972. This came out in 1977. But if you think about it, if I laid these two side by side, you'd probably think this one is newer. This one is uh, more modern. Because it honestly looks that way to me. Um, wow, that's fascinating. Okay, well... I'm gonna bring you away, Atari, because you actually work. The Odyssey, it doesn't look like it's going. But, but we're gonna give it a go anyway, right? We're gonna give it a go anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna jump cut to having all this plugged in and we're gonna see if it works. Well guys, I, uh, I plugged it in and it did not work. Um, well, I mean, I want to rephrase that. It's not that it didn't work. It's just that I don't have the card to make it work. <laughs> um, which I think is okay. I mean, like, I wasn't, I wasn't really that pressed about playing it because it wouldn't be worth it. I mean, like, Atari games are primitive, but literally, like, the footage that I've been splicing in, you can see it. The graphics this creates is barely anything. It creates two square dots. And so the gameplay is, leaves much to be desired. Um, it's not necessarily, I would say, as retro as a the 2600, because the 2600 is retro, right? Because it has, it has the, the same cartridges, it was, it was the first, like, successful one, it had colorful cartridges. There was a lot about the, um, Atari that was fun, it felt like a, you know, a video game system, uh, it felt like something new. And don't get me wrong, the Odyssey did definitely, it definitely was something new. But they, they hadn't figured it out yet, you know? It's kind of like, um, jeez. It's, it's like, um, 
an early version of the internet or early version of like social media. I can't, I can't really think of it off the top of my head, but you know, it was the first of its kind and it doesn't surprise me that it didn't do well because the first of its kind in pretty much anything doesn't really do all that well. It set the groundwork for what was going to be an incredibly successful industry. You know, this launched the biggest entertainment industry in the world, pretty much. I think it surpassed film uh, not too long ago. So it definitely has a place in history. Um, it's a shame that more people don't know about it. Well, I wouldn't say it's a shame, but like not a lot of people know about it. If you told them, if you told someone, you know, what, what the um, first video game system was, most people who knew anything would probably say the Atari or Pong, but home game console is this one. You know, this is pretty as close to ground zero as you can find with for the uh, video game industry. So while it's a shame that I couldn't get it to work, it is still really, really cool that I have it around. Because like I said, these can go for up to, you know, one, two, three, maybe $5,000. The fact that I got one for so cheap is, uh, it's more than enough for me. So that concludes this episode. I'm sorry, it was a bit of a downer compared to the Virtual Boy video and even the 2600 video. Um, we didn't get to see any actual, any actual gameplay. But my next video, that one, is going to be a bit more exciting. Uh, we are going to take a look at another Atari system, the successor to the 2600. See you guys.